Hello, I'm Diana Lovejoy, president of the Organic Garden Club. And today we're visiting one of our members, Tracy Kimes, beautiful organic garden. Hi, Tracy. I'm excited to hear about your business. Hi, Diana. I'm Tracy Kimes from Tracy's by the Yard, and I have a small design consulting business here in Westlake Village where I like to uh, teach people how to garden as well as how to plant organic vegetable gardens. I like to garden coach and work one-on-one -on -one with my customers as well as work to help them come up with ideas to refresh their garden. Um, in addition, I work with realtors and the homeowners to help get their yards and gardens picture ready before listing. If you'd like to come along with me, I'd be happy to show you my organic vegetable garden. Follow me and we'll go down the hill. Oh, Diana, look, we have some cucumbers growing here and some easy pick tomatoes. Also some bell pepper and uh, other herbs growing here. The onions are ready to harvest. Hey Diana, you may have noticed that some of my vegetables have cages over them. That's to keep the critters out. This year I have three water sources down the hill to hopefully keep the critters away from the vegetable garden. One, two, three, and then an additional water source up by the patio. Come on in. Diana, I still have leftover carrots from plant being planted last fall and some Let's see what these are. These are an indigo tomato. More tomatoes over here. You know what this is. It's borage. It's one of the best pollinators around. And the yara will come up soon and also provide a pollinating plant. So this year I've uh, planted my sun gold again as a trellis much more successful than previous years, and hopefully this will uh, form at the top. I like to use umbrellas in my vegetable garden because we have so much sun in this patio and it's so hot that this gives the plants a little bit of relief from the hottest of summer sun. And I can move them around the garden oh, depending on where the sun's shining. So that is a purple tomato called Midnight Snack. And that's the first time I've grown this one this year. They tends to be a small cherry tomato uh, with a, um, a strong skin and um, they are ripening slowly and they're just probably a week away from being harvested. I've made a trellis of a sun gold tomato, which I think are everyone's favorites. I used an old uh, set of tomato cages to make a a V at the top so these can gen generally join together. This year I've been much more successful and I think partly it's because I've added the umbrellas down here. I have three now to give a little relief from the hot sun. Even though tomatoes like to be grown in full sun, I realize that they won't set fruit over 90 degrees and sometimes the tomatoes split on the vine. So for me, I have these umbrellas which I can move around the garden um, when needed and I can put them down if it's overcast, but it really provides a little relief for our hot Southern California sun when you're growing fruits and vegetables. So Diana, these are my San Marzano tomatoes. I actually love to cook and slice these fresh. I have two plants next to each other since I can see how they like to grow. They have a tall trellis if I need to uh, attach them or secure them. And I'll probably eventually have to net the whole area um, from the birds and the uh, critters in, in my garden because I have such a large property down below that they just came to, seem to come from everywhere. Hoping that the water features will keep them away uh, along with the cayenne pepper I use, um, usually sprinkled at the base. So we'll see how that comes along, but hoping for lots of San Marzano this year. Oh, so look, you see there has been a critter in my garden last night. That's a cherry tomato that's been eaten. Even though I've sprinkled a little cayenne pepper, I'll need to do more, and I'll definitely need to net this trellis to keep them out of the garden. Um, and I have another one above it netted. That I'll probably pick today with our warmer temperatures. I like to pick the tomatoes once they start to um, blush and not wait till they're fully ripened for several reasons, so they don't split, but also so that I can beat the critters to the, to the fruits and vegetables. 
And again, here's uh, another zucchini over here. This one is actually one of my favorites. It's called Emerald Gem from Botanical Interest. It's a nice small zucchini plant that really keeps its size and shape well and doesn't sprawl all over the garden. Great for small gardens and containers. Um, there are two more zucchini in, zucchini in this bed, actually a yellow squash and a black beauty. And these will both help each other with pollinators coming in with the flowers and the lavender in front, as well as these beautiful cucumber plants, which have been netted. I just flipped it over like a veil. Uh, I'm gonna eventually net this whole bed. Actually, there are some cu cucumbers in this plant as well. One is ready to be picked. I think I'll pick it right now. So, and many more to come. This tall trellis seems to work well. And I may do some hand pollinating of the squash just to get them going because they have been covered. And, uh, and I moved another zucchini over here to keep all my pollinator needs together. Uh, and this is caged to keep anyone from eating the new growth that's coming out of here. This is a late start. I'll be adding some more vegetables midsummer, as I always do, to really extend my harvest into the fall. So um, again, I'm all about critter prevention, trying to keep my plants healthy, healthy, picking any yellow leaves off, and also spraying with neem oil uh, if I need to for the moisture we've had this spring. Looks like everything's pretty good. No powdery mildew, that's actually the marking on the uh, yellow squash compared to the zucchini, which has no markings on the leaves. This can often be mistaken as powdery mildew, but since it doesn't rub off, it's just the pattern of the leaf. Let's look at some more tomatoes here. Um, but actually, first, Diana, I wanted to show you the wildflowers, which I planted specifically to bring more pollinators into the garden. We have a couple new ones. I planted these in, the, in April. However, they've been so slow to start with our cooler weathers. This is a nice new one. This pretty pink one just came into the garden this week. All these bachelor buttons are gorgeous, late start. Calendulas, a really a favorite in the garden. Um, they, are, they come back year after year. Those are volunteer. And I'm sure I'll have some bachelor buttons next year. Uh, and California poppies, all part of a wildflower garden mix that I picked up and sprinkled along this extra space that I couldn't plant vegetables in, but was really helpful to bring the pollinators into the garden so they could find the plants that need pollinating. Some beautiful poppies here. So Diana, let's look inside here. I really am trying to keep the pests out and not have everything fully enclosed. But this netting really is a good, uh, a good uh, barrier for them. And sometimes if they come in, I'll have to put more plastic uh, fencing along here. But there's definitely some Juliet's ready to go right out of the garden. And I will get those harvested along with the rest of them that are ready to be picked before the animals come in. So this netting, um, I don't need my tomatoes to be pollinated so I can go with a finer netting, but for the larger uh, flowers that need pollinating, I have to go with a bigger netting. And look, down here I have my sweet potatoes growing. These are two different varieties, um, garnet and then also a purple variety, and they're doing really well this year. I don't have them in full sun um, until later in the year. Right now they have a little bit of shade just to get their leaf growing going and they're really filling out nicely this year, as well as this um, extra tomato plant. So with the sweet potato leaves, you can eat up to 20% of them. They're very tasty uh, without hurting the plant. And these take six months to be fully um, full grown and then you have to dry them after that. So I had to plant these in a March. I was a little late this year, April, and won't be able to harvest them probably until uh, November. I'm hoping they'll be ready for Thanksgiving. I have a little bit of uh, bok choy growing here and I'll be harvesting that soon uh, as long as a late plant tomato. I had to harvest my lettuce already. It was just too hot to grow that. Um, I had to move this lemon down here. I just didn't have any room in my patio so it's doing really well in this full sun. Also brings some more pollinators in. The bees love it. And the uh, three tomatoes here Big rainbow, Roma, and another big rainbow. 
Uh, looking forward to getting some nice big slicers out of these. Again, they're fully, fully enclosed because the critters just come up the hill and want to enjoy um, a nice little salad bar in my garden. So it's all about um, cleaning the leaves up and keeping them nice and open at the bottom so the diseases can't form, spraying with neem if needed, and really keeping them protected from the critters. And I'll use sometimes just a flat on top with a rock or a brick to keep it fully enclosed from uh, any of the squirrels that want to come up here and have a little bite. It's you. Diana, you may wonder how I get to those tomatoes. Well, I can hook this metal cage around it and then easily unhook it to go in and harvest what I need. Here's one of the tomatoes that's not quite ready, but I definitely have them growing well and protected in here. I also keep my uh, tomato growing area of the dirt very clear of extra leaves, so there's plenty of air space and the tomatoes don't get um, diseases. There's so many in here, you can also find them a lot easier when there's less leaves, but I'm picking a few off right now and you can see there's probably a dozen or so tomatoes just ripening in there. And then when I'm done cleaning my tomatoes or harvesting them, I just hook that back up and put the top on and then I'm good to go and I can keep the animals out. Again, for me, it's all about keeping the critters at bay and happy. Um, I also put a bird feeder down at the bottom of the hill if they wanted to have the debris or the extra seeds that fall out. They can start using the bird feeder at the bottom of the hill and the three water sources. Um, I often find that sometimes they just chew the top of the cucumber plant. They're not looking for the cucumber. They're getting the new growth of the squash or the new growth of the computer of the computer of the computer or they're getting the new growth of the cucumber. And what that they're doing is it stops the growth of the cucumber plant entirely, and they're not actually getting the fruit, but I now have to throw that plant away. Um, so if I can give the squirrels a water source, um, they're not gonna come after my plants as much. Um, I still have to fend off the critters who want the ripe tomatoes, but uh, that's what I do with my netting and any kind of screening or fencing I do to keep it safe and harvest harvestable. One of my friends asked me, what do you do with all those tomatoes? And um, actually, I usually give them to my clients. I'll bring a paper bag or a cup and, and leave them at their door. And it's a lot of fun to share different varieties of tomatoes and actually get them started. So I now have three clients who I met through garden design and they either have grow bags like I use for the sweet potatoes in a small space garden for tomatoes, or they have them on pots on their patio. And two of those actually live on West Lake, the lake itself, on a small side yard. They're growing tomatoes and loving the fact that they have organic produce right off, uh, right in their backyard. So again, by sharing my tomatoes, I have the ability to encourage other people to grow their own food. And uh, it's been really enjoyable and a fun experience. So Diana, some people want to know uh, what I do with the top of the cage when my tomato plant gets too tall. So what I do is I like to use this um, pre-made um, root guard that is called a gopher root guard. And it's usually placed at the bottom of the hole to protect fruit trees and other trees from gophers eating the roots. And what I do is I flip it over and then I put it on top of the uh, cage or on top of the fencing to allow my plant to grow an extra couple of feet and that will be secured either with clips or fit nice and snugly in there. And now my plant can continue to grow without the threat of animals coming in. One of the things I've noticed here in California is that we have a lot more crawling in, uh, critters. And in the East Coast, they're only putting fencing up around the outside for deer and other kinds of animals. They don't seem to have the overhead protection need that we have here. We have to tend to cover everything from the top because of the kind of animals that live in California, as opposed to just deer um, and other animals that would be eating our uh, produce. So Diana, when we moved here 23 years ago, we really wanted to find a space to put a vegetable garden. So below our pool, we had this uh, tier, this tiered hillside um, on this half acre. And what we decided to do is originally we had an LGB train set up here with a rack railway and a tunnel and half of it was 22 feet of it was the train and 22 feet was the vegetable garden. So we had the beds brought in um, and the train was built and it took 
months and months to build this elaborate train set. And as our kids grew up, uh, we realized we didn't need the train set anymore. We packed that away and just dismantled it and added an extra bed and added all this extra growing space because we really didn't want our vegetable garden to take up part of our lawn or our pool area, but we were able to use this tiered level within our sloping hillside for our vegetable garden and have a great usable space that otherwise really wasn't having anything done with it. So this is our tiered vegetable garden here with lots of wildflowers, um, room to stand, room to come work and have everything away from the house but also um, as much space as I could possibly need. So Diana, let's talk a little bit about watering. I like to use adjustable spray heads on my drip system because they allow you to adjust it from 1 to 14 gallons. I certainly don't need 14 gallons per plant, but I can turn them off if I remove a plant and I can easily move them around the garden depending on uh, where my plants are. They work really well in containers and that allows me to not have to hand water. But believe it or not, I didn't put this drip system in until a year and a half ago. So I was down here almost every day checking the soil, either using a soil moisture meter or by hand, and making sure every plant had the right amount of water. And that was really uh, time consuming. So now every single plant down here has its own emitter. Um, and that way I can adjust it if it needs a little more water or a little less and not have to worry about how many days of the week each section's on. What I did for my wildflower garden this year is I ran a drip hose, a simple, inexpensive, 20, a $9, 25 foot drip hose underneath the dirt before I planted my wildflowers. And that way, when I'm down here gardening, I do a, a quick release, snap on the drip hose, turn it on for maybe 10, 15 minutes while I'm harvesting or picking leaves off plants and let my wildflowers get some water. And then I can quickly really re release it and put my hose back on so that um, I can do a little hand watering touch up if I need it. Sometimes the sweet potatoes uh, get a little dry. Um, they are a tropical, semi-tropical, and they do like to be in the south where it's a little more humid, but they do fine here. I just keep my eye on it. But all of my plants here in my garden are on a drip, which is a lot of emitters, but uh, so worth it so that I'm not down here every single day watering my garden. So I want to let you know that anyone can grow vegetables in your yard, no matter how big or how small, there's always a place to grow something. Uh, whether you use felt grow bags or pots, you don't need to have a large plot or even a wooden garden bed. I think that it's great just to get out in the garden and try your hand at a tomato or a cucumber or sweet potatoes because it is so much fun and it's great for all ages young and old, just to get out there and do it. Um, again, we're growing vegetables on a sloped hillside in Westlake Village, not in a plot, not in a field. You just have to find the right spot in your yard that gets the right amount of sun and that you have access to. So I hope you enjoy gardening and if you need any help, I'm happy to help you out in any way. Thank you.